the intro. <laughs> this thing's nuts! Oh my god! I mean, it's wet, it's damp, it's very, very cold, and we're on uh, for very high performance orientated tyres. Welcome back to the F12 TDF. Now we've finally done the first drive video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was worth the wait. Being completely transparent, I did want to do it in a totally different country because, well, it's November, never the best of times in the UK. But nonetheless, the content had to come and I just didn't see any other opportunity to film it other than this very small window. So here we are, let me know, comments below. How did you like the first drive video? If you haven't seen it, the link is also below. But today, I'm doing a video which I don't normally do. So I normally just like to immerse you in cars in terms of the way they feel, what they're like to drive, try and uh, sit you in the driver's seat as best as I can and convey what something of such an incredible creation of Maranello is like to interact with. But I also feel that because the specs on these cars uh, are quite incredible and quite unique, I thought I owed it to you guys to uh, give you a better feel of the car for future reference. I thought I would share with you the full spec breakdown of the car. What has been a unique introduction to Ferraris of late is that, oh my good God, have you heard that? The interaction! The relationship between the engine and gearbox on this thing is unbelievable, it's otherworldly. Anyway, um, yeah, if you want to hear about that sort of stuff, first drive video link below. One of the unique uh, features of modern day Ferraris, I think from around like 2015 onwards, is the introduction of a spec plaque. So all of the optional extras that were in addition to the features that come with the car are laser engraved and then mounted on a plaque that is typically found in the boot of the car. So we're going to check out that plaque, I'll show you where it is, what it itemises, and we'll go through what all of those options look like. Oh look, a very long straight. Okay, so this, as I mentioned, isn't a video that I would normally do, but I do feel like a full spec run through of this car, like a full spec breakdown would be good for you guys to find out the finer intricate details of these wonderful cars. I'm gonna show you as I go through this. So, first of all, I'm gonna show you the plaque in the boot. Now, on the door of the TDF is two buttons down here. Top one is to release the fuel cap for when you need to fill it up. And this, as the symbol would suggest, is for the boot. Now, if I press and hold this, you shall hear the boot click, just like that. And then we shall come around. Now, there is no further latch. It's just unlatched and off you go. Now inside, you'll see that the carbon runs throughout. Well, what's brilliant is that all of the satin carbon runs throughout. So any carbon that is specced on this car has become fully satin coated or matte coated. And I think it just makes the overall feel of this car feel a little bit more special. Typically, matte carbon in Ferraris is reserved for their limited edition special cars. Now you can option it as an optional cost in their standard cars, but as standard in their special cars, it does come with satin. And this here, this is the plaque I was telling you about. Now in the boot of the TDF, it is quite well hidden, but these are the optional extras that were specced on the TDF. So you have a full breakdown here, look, and they've all got the codes next to them. So adaptive front lighting system, that is lights that turn, the actual bulbs themselves turn with the inputs of the steering wheel. So that you can see what is happening around corners. That is actually inbuilt with the option of the front nose lift. So this car by convention actually rides quite low. 
Uh, and so what happens is when you uh, spec the option to be able to raise the height of the car, and particularly raise the nose, obviously with raising the nose of the car, the angle and trajectory of the headlights changes. So you actually get this option, the adaptive headlights option, um, as sort of as default by specking that, because if you raise up the nose and the lights are pointing in the air, it's kind of not too good for seeing where you're going. So the, the lights actually, in effect, self level themselves and point back down again upon the nose lift coming up so with one option you kind of get two which is why the uh, nose lift option looks disproportionately expensive okay let's start with the exterior of the car now with the tdf being a special edition car there is a lot of carbon that comes on the car it's standard but let's just look around at some standout features so basically anything on the rear of the car that is black other than the letters on the number plate is actually in carbon fiber what i particularly like is the uh, formula one inspired or race inspired uh, fog light so you'll see this has come directly off race cars this shrouding i'm not sure of the history or the purpose of the design of having the light come through multiple holes but you'll see exactly this kind of fog light on formula one cars and racing cars and this housing this casing for the light and also the reverse camera which i shall just give a quick clean uh mold nicely into the carbon diffuser now this also has active aero so you see those red flaps there those flaps actually drop down upon speed to reduce drag now here is my favorite feature of the car now this is a specific feature to the tdf i love these vents in the arches this particular layout for me reminds me of the 288 gto but it's from the gto series in general there are often arch vents like this to help reduce pressure in the wheel arches because this car will do over 200 miles an hour and at that speed you do get quite a lot of air pressure building up in the arches so to reduce lift and pressure in there that's what these vents are for now interestingly on previous cars i've had i have liked to have painted the brake calipers almost a contrasting color to the rest of the car these are painted Rosso Corsa, which is the same color as the car itself. Now, I've never been a big fan of that, but something about on the TDF, it just seems to work. I think it's because there's so many contrasting panels on this car that it doesn't look like too much of a block of red. Case in point right next to it, we have here these exaggerated, elongated carbon side skirt if you go down towards the rear of the car there is this huge flare of carbon that meets exactly with the outer wheel line and it gives the car so much stance and this is something else that's quite hard to convey on camera is just how much wider the car is than a standard f12 part of the reason for that is the fact that they put 275 section front tires on this car that is absolutely huge. It's so huge that it generated so much grip from the front that Ferrari had to engineer rear wheel steer for the first time on any of their cars. And that is what has contributed to this car being so agile. When you get in this car, you actually approach it with your GT brain in, your, your Grand Tora brain in because of the platform it's based on. But because it's so hyper agile, you actually have to adjust your inputs with the steering because it turns in like nothing else I've ever experienced with this car. Kind of platform particularly with it being a front engine car uh, it's incredible actually you sort of steer more with your wrists than you do with your arms it's so responsive and coming around to the front what might not be obvious immediately is the headlights the actual inner buckets of the headlights are carbon fiber so that is a distinct optional extra to have satin carbon inside the headlights is incredible and they've got these gorgeous light tubes that go up there which at night time give the look of this car such a distinct and menacing face i think right now this is one of the most aggressive imposing looking ferraris out there we'll see what they end up doing with the 812 tdf equivalent but until then this for me aesthetically certainly uh, just wows me every time i see it i see a different sculpture a different shape to the car and it also comes alive and changes depending on the environment particularly when it's sunny the sculpture shows up massively now a unique feature to the tdf is this carbon side blade here um what you can't tell is that this 
whole aero bridge, that whole panel is actually carbon fiber. And that's how they've managed to get this seamless integration of carbon and paint there. When you run your finger over this, there is no distinguishable feature at all to suggest how they've done that. It's not until you come around the back of it and, and you see underneath that you realize that that whole panel, this whole aero bridge here is in fact carbon. And it's these little details that it's not until they've been pointed out to you that you realize that every single component of this car is different than it is on an F12. Little known fact, the rake of the rear window. So this whole rear section is actually at a different angle than it is on the F12. You might notice that it has specific glass. If you notice the shape of this glass, it is very bespoke. I would not want to crack that glass. God knows how much it would cost to replace, but if I give you a top-down view like that, so all of that shape there is one piece of glass. I love these flares, and when you're sitting behind it at sort of other road car level, it gives such a distinct shape. It's very, very cool. Now, while we're round the back, this insert here across the back that is also carbon, that does come standard but it's just one more example of how many contrasting panels there are on this car and this also has the upgraded exhaust system so we've got anodized black titanium tips and a titanium exhaust which is the uh, sports exhaust upgrade now i've never driven any other tdf to know if there's much of a difference in sound between the sports exhaust system and their standard exhaust system judging by that at five percent throttle this thing sounds ridiculous one more unique feature to my car is the addition of a titanium fuel filler cap. Now, my dealer was only allocated five F12 TDF, and he said that no other TDF that he has seen has the titanium fuel filler cap. The reason that I optioned this was because, as standard, the wheels come with these wheel bolts here. Now these are all titanium. You can identify them differently to standard Ferrari wheel bolts because they have this indentation here and of course they are of a titanium sort of satin finish. Standard wheel bolts have a sort of a head on them and they're shiny and they just don't look quite as sporty. Now when this car comes as standard that fuel filler cap is actually bright silver and when you stand back it's amazing how much the fuel filler cap stands out and i thought you know what with having these in titanium it would be great to match the two so that the filler cap doesn't look sat there on its own now one more exterior feature which is very unique to the tdf is this rear winglet on the outside of this tiny little window at the back here. This is all about aero and downforce and channeling air over the car. But this is actually integrated into the window seal itself. Look, that is one single piece of rubber molded in. Now you can't tell it's how stiff that is and yet it forms part of this rubber window seal. You can see, look, it comes right out from under the car. When you see that in your rear view mirror, just flaring out over that arch, and you can just see the top of the exaggerated flip boot lid there. Those three components combined with the more traditional style fuel cap is such a lovely sight. Okay, inside the car, join me. Now, for me, this is where the magic begins. The intricacies of the interior. Let me just close this door for you. Well, first of all, what you can't tell is that the door actually feels lighter. So Ferrari managed to shave 110 kilograms of weight from the original F12. Now, as a spot of context, their limited edition track focus cars normally shed between 90 to 100 kilograms. So they went that extra stage and shed another 10 kgs above their average weight loss. Um, a lot of that is through the use of carbon fiber and carbon fiber on the interior of this is kind of everything. Contrasting with the outside where all of the exterior carbon is gloss on the inside, Everything is matte, matte or satin. I can never tell what's the best description for it. But because we're so used to seeing carbon fiber with a gloss finish, when you get inside, it makes the interior on this so special and so unique. Uh, I could sit in here for hours. There's something about seeing carbon sculpture with a satin finish. It's just a magical thing. It's actually something that you can't see straight away. So behind the seat, I'll just show you now, if I reach in there, there's this little handle. See there, look, that is the handle you lift up to articulate the seat forwards. But it's not until you see the back of these seats, you realize the whole rear, in fact, the whole seat, in fact, is made of matte carbon, but it's the shape of it. 
it's almost organic, you know, it's 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 like a life form type of shape. There's so many flowing shapes. There's this hole here that goes right through to the other side of the seat. I love this simple, it's just a simple little handle here that you use to release and pull this seat forward. And it gives access to all of this shelf on the back where more carbon, the end plate on this shelf as well is all satin carbon. But I love how much effort they've gone into continuing this carbon theme throughout the car. So there's an area that you hardly ever see, but when you do see it and you pull those seats forward, it's just gorgeous. Look at that there, it's awesome. So, over the shoulder then, let's start at the back. This whole shelf, uh, even the bit that goes all the way up to the glass over there, this is all matte carbon. I shall go around to the boot in a minute because you will actually not believe that the size of this thing is colossal. You can actually remove this top shelf and this lower section here which is currently dividing the boot. When you open that up it is a cave of carbon fibre. Uh, I shall show you shortly, you probably won't believe how large it, it is. And then we've got these Alcantara straps here with the contrast Rosso Corsa stitching and the Alcantara from then on flows through the car. And I'll take the passenger seat as an example of the Cavallino or Prancing Horse stitched in matching Rosso stitching with the central pinstripe running all the way through the middle of the seat. Now what's cool is, despite the fact that all of the seat is entirely clad in Alcantara, the middle section, this, is beautiful leather, which is convenient because this section does actually pick up some jean stain. Now leather cleans up so much better. Sometimes I've seen the opposite way around where the seat is leather and the contrasting panels are Alcantara and they do pick up lots of dirt. So with this car being black and the sensitive components being leather, it's actually quite practical. One thing you might have noticed is that while this design beautifully carries on the theme through the dashboard, that section there actually isn't a glove box. No, there is there is no glove box in the TDF despite it having a Grand Tour platform. This is purely a knee pad, essentially. So the passenger can pull their seat forward and while we're really tanking it, particularly on track, you can brace your knees against there if you wish to hold yourself in place a little bit tighter. And then on the dash, we have the optional extra of the passenger display screen. Now this is the Gen 1 screen. Uh, the Gen 2 now appears in the 812 Superfast, but if I just turn on the car, you can see right here that right now it defaults so the passenger can see the revs, the RPM, the, ge the gear we're in, and the miles an hour if you really want to scare them. But they have the option of being able to flick through all sorts of stats. All of this jazz, travel distance, travel time, it's all there for them to stay entertained slash scared if they want to. And this is also linked in with the settings of the Manatino on the steering wheel. So if I were to change that, you can see it goes from race to sport to wet and indicates to the passenger the different settings of the traction control and the diff and the gear shifts, etc. So yeah, it's all good fun. And then over here, now this is um, quite an interesting display because it's this sort of hybrid halfway house between it being evolved further than what the F12 offered, but not quite as advanced as what the 812 offers. So for example, in here on the F12, it, it wasn't as detailed as this when it came to uh, showing you the intricacies of the engine and tires. So this, when you're in race, displays if the engine is warm, if the tires are warm or too cool, and basically tells you the condition of the car and if you're okay to get on it. Generally, it's a really good indicator if you need to get any more heat in the tires or if you're on track, um, if you need to drop it off a bit and actually let the tires cool down. Now, you did have this option in the F12. It's just that the way it was displayed wasn't as quite as in-depth as it is on this system here. And one other feature which you might remember from the Speciali is this control stalk, also clad in the matte carbon. So Launch control, automatic, reverse, auto. Uh, I very rarely drive it in auto. I do prefer driving it with the paddles here, which by the way, by standard, has the elongated shift paddles. I'm not sure if you can tell from here, but they are absolutely huge. Uh, Ferrari recently have released an update for cars where you can retrospect these. If you put them next to the standard paddles, standard shift paddles, they finish about there. So these are 
almost 50% larger. Uh, but if you want, if you're in town or in traffic or just generally want to chill, press the auto button and the whole drivetrain goes into auto. And then steering wheel in front of us, optioned with the carbon fiber driver zone, which gives you the entirety of the top of this. Look at all this, it's all molded out of matte carbon. I could stare at it for hours. But it molds into this driver section here. Now, carbon fiber driving zone gives you the carbon wheel with the shift lights in the top here. Now, when you're really revving this thing out, this changes shades of color before indicating when the uh, sh the optimum shift time is, and it'll go all the way up here and then flash blue and that's when you know when to pull the paddle at the optimum time also of course you can put this into many different modes down here so i'm just going to turn it on just listen to this one second it's ridiculous <laughs> anyway so this is the famous manatino wet sport race ct off and esc off wet right now is amazing the calibration that they have done on the esc in wet is an amazing thing now you saw at the beginning of this video that this thing will spin up in fourth gear if it's damp and the tires aren't warm in wet it doesn't skip a beat it just has a very smooth way of managing the power delivery so it never steps out on you in any uh, crazy circumstances this time of year perfect so sport is the equivalent of your sort of daily driving if it's dry you're not in the mood necessarily for grabbing it by the scruff of its neck but you still want to enjoy the car in a spirited manner with all of the ESC on sports where it's at into race now race is the option you would choose if you want quicker gear shifts. The way that this gearbox shifts in race is fantastic. It has the lightning speed shifts of a twin clutch gearbox because that's what it has in it. But what is very unique, and it's something that I've never felt in a dual clutch box before, it kind of shifts with the character of a single clutch and it gives you that whack, but it, but it actually initiates the gear shift with the speed and precision of a dual clutch gearbox. I've always maintained the number one thing that sold me this car is the relationship between the engine and the gearbox. And I go on about that time and time again. It really is something to marvel. Um, for those of you guys that love the Aventador and the character that the, uh, the gearbox brings to that car, I fully appreciate that. I'm gonna go out there and say it, that this is the best of both worlds. You put this thing into race, man, it slams that gear home. It's such an incredible feeling, but it does it, as I mentioned, still with the integrity of a twin clutch box. It is a marvel. And then back to two more final settings. We've got CT off and ESC off. So CT off is kind of like a uh, halfway house. It allows you to play around and slide it around, but it actually reads the angle of your steering compared with the angle of your throttle. And it basically knows if you have the ability and anticipation to have caught your slide to a degree it's not going to bend physics and save you if you've gone past the point of no return it just sort of helps you not get there in the first place until you do this now the trick to esc off is you have to hold it over so if i hold this over now you just listen to it beep there you go and it says right there esc off okay that means you are controlling 770 horsepower through the rear wheels entirely on your own you don't you don't want that you don't i wouldn't recommend that it's this thing is take no prisoners one thing which is very unique about the character and how they've engineered the character of this car is because the car was invite only and they only made 799 of them they were allowed a bit of freedom to uh, tailor and cater this car to a specific type of client uh, and that is typically one with a lot of experience that uh, doesn't necessarily want the car to flatter them and that's exactly what this thing doesn't do if you're not on your ball with this thing it will bite you in the ass it's the, the throttle response is razor sharp the steering inputs as i mentioned earlier are ridiculous it feels much more like a sort of rear mid-engined supercar than it does this grand tour platform and together with esc off i mean you are on your own so in weather like this, let's keep this off and particularly on the road. That is track stuff only. Let's just briefly discuss the Ferrari instrument cluster. So on the left-hand side, the left-hand screen, this displays all of the information to do with your car, uh, particularly 
dependent on the current driving setting you're in based on what you set on the Manatino. In the middle, it displays the gear you're in and the revs only. So the, the middle dial, that is purely revs. And you'll notice that the TDF tops out at 9,000 RPM, which for a V12 is the most glorious experience. And then on the right, you can configure what you would like to be shown there. By default, uh, I have the speed in very big characters because this thing gathers pace like you wouldn't believe and you need to be reminded of where you're at with that otherwise you can get in trouble pretty quickly but you can also with the help of these buttons down here you can have a play around with options like the radio and the settings for the uh, sound system which by the way this has the optional JBL upgraded sound system so in that media this is where you would pair a bluetooth device uh, you could connect it auxiliary or you could connect it through usb and you can keep on drilling down here's the navigation now the navigation on the f12 was never that great they have made a substantial upgrade on this in that you know it actually works now i still kind of default to ways generally on my phone and I suction mount that to the screen but I do have to say that I have used this a few times and it is vastly improved over previous generations. Phone and setup and in setup you can go through everything to do with the bass and treble on your audio to connecting your phone and dimming and brightening the display etc. So that's all going on on the right hand side and if you hold uh, options and, and view down it then returns back to speed which as I mentioned earlier very handy. And then on the left this is what shows up depending on, as I mentioned, what you set up with the Manatino. Now for me, most of the information is available when you're in race. So this gives you all of the settings around the diff and the uh, traction control, etc. Uh, but the vehicle information that you can get within race is basically more comprehensive than in any other setting. And you can flick through lap times, top speeds, you can have trips if you're on uh, track to compare previous laps and then you can also toggle into your status so it gives you the engine and oil temperatures pressures battery levels and importantly tire pressures which again is more important when you're on track but this gives you a sort of a, a clearer visual guide than uh, was available in the previous uh, standard f12 system now i did mention as well that there has actually been an upgrade since then in the 812 super fast but this is a hybrid this is a halfway house between the previous gen and the new gen. And for me, it's a wonderful step up. Having spent uh, two years in, in an F12, I guess I might notice it more than most, but take it from me. It's the, the instrument cluster is basically a higher res screen, more definition, more info. It's just a bit more of a crisp experience. Okay, finally, let's just come around to the boot again. Now, uh, right now, it's clearly in two separate sections. We've got the main boot, which is uh, separated by this carbon panel here, and there's this b baggage area with straps. However, this whole unit, which articulates like so, this whole thing comes out. So just check out the size of this space when this unit comes out. So what you do, see this little handle there? You pull that up like so, and it connects to this clip magnetically, like, like that. So that is held there. This comes down and you can see just here, there's these little rails left and right of this panel. You pull him down and you just pull it out. Slot it right out like that. And then <laughs> you have, I'm not sure if the camera's picking up on how big that is. Take it from me, it, it, three golf bags, easy. Not that I play golf, but it's just a, a general measure of space. You could definitely throw it three golf bags in there it is look the whole space colossal so really this is the ultimate grand tour dare i say the hyper tour it's got the most incredible engine and combined with such practicality i mean seriously like all joking aside that is a um i'm just not gonna do it in any context just look at it it's massive
by far my favourite is the act of driving this thing. I mean, I know I go on about it, but for me it is all about that, the connection, the sense of massive gratification you get from interacting with this engine and gearbox, the, the relationship between the two. It's, it's so razor fast. Look. I mean, that has the speed, it shifts the same speed as the PDK in the Porsche, which by, I would say, all benchmarks is considered the greatest gearbox in the world. It's, oh God. It's just something to behold, isn't it? <laughs> and as I was saying earlier, while if you put it into wet, and actually even sport, it does deliver that shift with pretty much a, a tone change kind of shift. Like I'm on the upshifts now. There's no uh, drama there. It just does it as most other twin clutch gearboxes do it. But as soon as you put it into race, wait for the upshift. It also engineers a slam into it as well. I've never experienced a gearbox like it. The Aventador provides the slam without the finesse. The Porsche provides the finesse without the slam. This, it's molded them both together. It's just genius. It's the best. I love it. Wow. Anyway, uh, as I mentioned, that isn't the normal style of video that I would typically do. Normally I'm all about sharing with you uh, the drives and the wider lifestyle and culture that comes with these cars. But of all the cars that I've featured on this channel, this one is the one which I have been requested to give um, a breakdown of the spec on more than anything. I'll tell you what though, you gotta be careful in the wet. I can feel it having a bit of a squirm around. details if you want to know more about this car I'm, I'm all open to sharing it as much as possible but as I mentioned this is one of the cars where people have requested more than ever more of a sort of an in-depth walk around and look and check out of the spec of it so I hope that was what you expected that's not typically the kind of style of video I normally share but I hope you liked it please let me know in the comments below so as always guys thanks for watching and we shall see you next time Woo